Hi, welcome to the first of 12 tutorial videos where we will build the Autofabrica Type 2 motorcycle tank. I'm Alex Popov, a student of Learning Alias, and in these videos I'll be showing you some workflows that you can hopefully pick up and use in your own work. So you will receive a wire file with canvas images, top and side setup like shown. I'll also now just show you some pictures of the bike, the tank that we're modeling. It's important to understand the volumes that you're going to be building. You can find these on the Auto Fabrica website if you wanted to take a closer look at them. Um, unfortunately, I don't have blueprints, which is what you really want to be building off when you're looking for the highest degrees of accuracy. However, we just have top and side photographs to go off, so um, that will have to do. And as this build is purely for visual purposes, it's not too much of a problem and we can compensate for that when placing our construction curves. So in plan view, we can see the sides of our tank have a bulge at the front, it's thinner at the rear, and there'll be a blend section in between. Um, these will be the most complex and most important surfaces. So we'll start with them first, and they'll drive the rest of the tank. To demonstrate that a little bit more clearly, um, I've jumped forward, and this is what we're going to build now. This is a 3D curve network, which will dictate the patch layout of our surfaces. In these construction curves, you can see we have main surfaces front and rear with a blend section in between these here. Okay, so let's get started. Jumping back to top view now, I'm gonna place an edit point curve set to degree five, roughly where I think the shoulder line for our tank's gonna be. And then selecting the inner CVs, I can position them simply move them constraining to the y-axis in order to constrain movement to a particular axis you hold left middle or right mouse button and I select the curve and again move it constraining to the z-axis this time and move it up into position in top view i'm just going to very quickly by eye assess the positioning of our cvs you want them to be neat and have a strong relationship with one another so you can see this one needs to be pulled out a little bit there we go once I'm happy with the positioning of our first curve, I'm going to duplicate it very simply by copying and pasting. There we go. And then move and constrain movement to the y-axis and pull it outboard a little bit. And this will be the lower edge of the rear of our tank. So we're just going to position that here. We can now apply our first locator, the curve curvature locator found here. Uh, this will help us analyze the curvature along our curves. I don't want to go into too much detail at this point around this tool, but it essentially allows you to analyze curves or surface edges um, and how much curvature you've got along the curves or surface edges, as well as the boundaries between curves or surfaces. It allows you to analyze the continuity that you have. And as I say, don't want to go into too much detail. It's quite complicated, but the more experience you get, the easier you'll be able to read them and easier you'll be able to manipulate them by transforming your CVs. I'll show you a quick example now. I'm going to apply the curve curvature locator to both of our curves and then I will use the transform CV tool found in the control panel to pull this CV out and slide it along to create more curvature towards the end of our curve and therefore better lead into our top surfaces. Once happy select locator and delete. Now we can create the curve that will help us construct the front of the side of our tank so we'll duplicate this curve by copying and pasting and then move it outboard constraining to the y-axis holding the right mouse button as you move it to constrain to that direction so you can see it doesn't quite line up to the canvas image as i said they're very inaccurate when you're just using photos reference the petrol cap and see how it's not quite on center so the position of our curves will compensate for that but the shape should still be representative of what you can see in the canvas image I move these CVs into position now using transform CV and moving in the X, Y, Z directions. And then finally apply the curve curvature locator to check that you're happy with the curvature along your curve, which is looking okay. So now I'll hide the CVs on these curves and with the edit point curve tool again, this time set to degree three curve, we'll place the vertical curves that are gonna allow us to give the sides of our tank some front profile shape. So I'm using control alt and clicking along our curves to snap to the curve and I'm placing these vertical curves where I think the point of tangency is going to be between our center section and our front and rear sections. So about there. 
In perspective view, we can see that one of our curves has snapped to the wrong position, so we'll delete it for now. With the detach tool, which I'll show you where to find that in a moment, I can snap to my curve and hit spacebar, and I can detach and delete the section of curve I no longer need. We can now rebuild the curve that we deleted earlier, and we know it's going to snap to the correct position this time. You know the curve's vertical when the pixelation stops, there we are. And with the detach tool, we're going to detach and delete the section we don't need from this point here. So with the detach tool selected, I will snap to the curve, control alt and click and hit enter and we can delete that section of curve. Now to complete our curve network, we use the edit point curve tool to build a curve, snapping to CVs using control and clicking close to the CV you want to snap to. Change the degree to degree five. Now with the align tool set to G2, continuity, take partial off. We can align our curve at this position here and here. And our curves are all now in place. We just need to give it some front profile shape. To do that, I'll go into front view, use the transform CV tool, select these CVs and in the X, Y, Z direction, constrain to the Y axis, which is the middle mouse button as you move, push these CVs outboard. So I'm shaping these curves by eye because I don't have a canvas image from the front and I also know roughly the curvature I'm after for the front profile of our side surfaces. So now the next thing to do is apply the curve curvature locator like we did before to make sure that our curves are all doing the same sort of thing, which they are. So we can delete those locators. So I've jumped forward a little bit and you can see the uppermost curve has changed to three smaller curves. To do that, I use the detach tool and instead of deleting the sections we don't need, I simply left them as they are. I've also changed the degree of all of my curves to degree five. To do that, you simply select the curves and then you go into the control panel and you can change the degree here. Now to evaluate our curve network, we'll use the curve curvature locator, selecting these curves here. And in top view, you can see we don't have G2. The curve is not smooth where our curves meet. So we'll use the align tool, set to G2 continuity, and we'll align our curves here and here. So we now have G2 continuity, represented by the combs for each of our curves lining up. However, G3 continuity, we would have a smooth transition between the combs for each of our curves. So to use the transform CV control, pulling in the NUV direction, as well as sliding CVs on our parent curves. And I'll just quickly change the degree of this curve to degree six. And pulling my CVs until my curvature comb is nice and smooth, which represents G3 continuity. That will result in very, very smooth reflections when we come to build our surfaces from these construction curves. And there we go, a nice smooth comb, and we're now ready to select and delete that locator and move on to the lower set of curves. Same principle, just align the center curve and then manipulate the CVs on the parent curve until we have a nice smooth comb. First and foremost though, let's hide the CVs on these curves so we don't select the wrong ones. And we'll align here and here. And with the transform CV tool found in the control panel here, I can hit spacebar and choose between NUV, slide or XYZ movement and I can move my CVs on the parent curves to pull my comb into an acceptable shape. Also to consider the position of our lower CVs in comparison to the corresponding CVs on the upper curve set, um, you want these to be in line um, so that when we come to build surfaces, we have a nice uniform hull structure that we can manipulate as required. Also create some leading towards the end of our curve by sliding these there we go. 
And finally, change the center curve to degree six so that it matches the corresponding curve in the upper curve set. There we are. I'll just unhide the CVs for these vertical curves and apply the curve curvature locator. Selecting these CVs and transforming them either by sliding them upwards or pulling them out in the NUV direction. You can see I'm creating some lead in, which is a good thing for when we come to build the blend to our top surfaces. With our curve network complete, we're ready to go ahead and build our first surfaces. We'll use the square tool with a degree five by degree five surface. Select the curves and there we go. For the second surface, you want G2 continuity along boundary four, as well as collinearity. There we go. Don't forget to change the degree in the U direction to degree six, so as to match our construction curve. And then for the third surface, same again, G2 continuity on boundary four, but don't forget to knock the U degree back down to five to match the construction curve. And there we are, our first surfaces are in. Before moving forward and direct modeling our surfaces, we can hide the CVs along the construction curves and delete the locators and apply some diagnostic shading. The curvature evaluation shader is very useful. You can find it here in the diagnostic shaders. By sliding the curvature color scale, it gives you a good impression of the degree of change of curvature over your surfaces. So you can see where you're gonna have inconsistencies in your reflections which would be represented where the change of color is not uniform. So here you can see it's a bit too green and we're going to have to address that. So I've unhidden the CVs on our construction curves and I can transform them. And because the surfaces still have their construction history, they will also follow suit. With the transform CV tool, I'll pull my CVs on my construction curves in order to achieve a more even flow of color from green to orange over our surfaces. We're also trying to get a more orange color towards the edges of our surface, which represents more curvature and therefore better lead in when we come to build the blends into our top surfaces. In the next video, we'll be direct modeling these surfaces in a lot more detail. Um, students of Learning Alias do have access to the tutorial videos on the website. One in particular by Kevin Deschmet is called Controlling Curvature Continuity and it goes into what is lead-in and how to create lead-in for your surfaces. Um, so do check those out. But for now, we'll leave this video here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next tutorial.